In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Flash. So, yo, what is freaking good, YouTube boys? You have your new anime subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel DC Kaiju Monsterverse based videos that we do on a daily basis for good. Subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and let me know down below. Did you enjoy the Flash if you've seen it? So, check us out on Twitter, WishUG, and also check us out on Instagram at WishU. So, the Flash movie comes out technically on the 16th in America. But you can watch it in England from the 14th, which is next week. It's next Wednesday. Although people will be watching it literally m Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Some people are watching it this week. So the Flash movie is very controversial already. And I feel like the directors have done their best. They've done their best to get people hype for this movie. Now, something that I need to address is comic book movies are not made for comic book fans. What? Wait, 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 what? They are made for the general population. The target audience is not comic book fans. Comic book fans will make up less than 5%, and that's being generous, of the overall audience. Okay, cool. I'm glad we've got that equation in there. I almost feel like DC fans, Snyderverse fans, feel like they're entitled and the movie has to be up to their standard. No, most movies, not just comic book movies, literally every movie that comes out, it's made for the general population. Why do you think Avatar 2 grossed over 2 billion? Why do you think No Way Home grossed over 1.4 billion? Why do you think Aquaman did over a billion? And why do you think Joker did over a billion? I could keep going. I could keep going. General population is what sells movies, video games. It's not made for the diehard fans. Sure, they put Easter eggs. They put little subtle hints that here and there which the general population may not understand. But guess what? They go on YouTube and type, The Flash, End and Explained. The Batman, End and Explained. They will literally look it up, so they don't need to understand it in the context. So, the Flash post credit scene has caused crazy controversy, And it's not even come out yet. So this top secret ending that is so secret, Andy Machete, Barbara Machete, I understand it. This essentially is a Walter Hamada, Hamadaverse movie that's been chopped up so much that, careful for spoilers, apparently the third act, it's so obvious that this movie has been chopped and cropped and edited and cut and sliced. But do you really think, do you really think the VFX and this CGI is going to look like it does in a trailer comparing Zack Snyder's just the in 4K video clip to a trailer footage is absolutely freaking pathetic. Now, I get it. A lot of the criticism from the reviews say the CGI is wonky. It might be. But at least watch it in IMAX before you're going to say that kind of stuff. So, controversy. People call in for James Gunn to be fired. This is a Walter Hamada movie. Okay, it was made when he was in charge of Warner Bros. Pictures. There was no DC studio. So people say, fire James Gunn because of the post credit scene. Get here lads get out of here what could they do seriously and the post credit scene if you understand the context does make sense and again it's made for the general population we know the new batman in batman brave and bold is not cast the new superman is not cast the new war stew is not cast so you cannot put the blame on the flash movie on james gunn or pete saffron or david zasloff what did you expect them to do reshoot the whole movie like they did multiverse madness no that would have sent production costs up crazily so we're gonna go over the post credit scene and how people are taking it out of context but it's not made for little jimmy that makes his little youtube videos it's not made for a snyderverse fan everyone that has watched it says it's a love letter. It's a really cool ending to the Snyderverse. Snyderverse, the DCEU, it is not going to be sold to Netflix. Not going to happen. Not even close. So it's leaked to the point where you can actually watch it so you 100% you know it's true. So I do get why it's nostalgia bait. And sure, you know me, I'm very transparent in the sense that I troll, I joke around. But just wait until I've watched the movie and you'll probably be surprised with my reaction to it. Because at the core, it is a Flash movie, so I already know I'm going to like it. So at the end of the movie, George Clooney appears. Cool story, bro. Okay, nostalgia bait. Like I said, they have not casted. And it would be pointless doing a faceless Batman scene, having him talking to someone faceless. Why? Because you'll get so much backlash from the faceless Henry Cavill stuff and all the other faceless characters. So 
They did what they felt was best at the end of the movie. We see George Clooney as he talks to Barry. Barry is saying, you're not Batman. And Clooney looks around and then says, Barry, what's wrong with you? Because no one should know he's Batman. So this is implying he's in a different universe because no one knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. But it also implies that the memories, the memories are still there with Ezra Miller, the Flash. So he, if he does continue after this movie, I have a pretty good record that he has no chance of staying. But maybe if the movie makes over 1.5 billion, maybe, maybe that there might be some tangible reasoning why he could stay. And if the reports and if the reviews from people that I do kind of respect their opinion, they all say Ezra Miller kills it as the two Barrys, which is cool. So this isn't the part that's got everyone, when I say everyone, a small part of the internet trolling it. And I get it, I'm a little bit of a troll, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to troll on this because it does make sense. So the post credit scene is Barry and Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman, walking out of a bar. They're chatting on a sidewalk. Drunk Arthur is like, you're telling me there are different Batmen? What about Barry? Says, you're the same furry, friendly guy. Because in Keaton's universe, he was a dog. Arthur then falls into a puddle and lays there face down. Barry says, I thought you were going to sleep on my couch. My home is right here. Arthur says, as he's patting the water. Then Arthur says, more beer gives Barry his ring to buy more. So what is this post credit there for? It's essentially there for the whole purpose of the Flash origin story, which is the following. You cannot do whatever you want to do. Barry Allen, yes, he can run forward in time. He can run back in time. He can go to the future, which has got some pretty cool storylines in the comic books. But this movie is here is to tell normies that the movie is going to end and they're in a new universe essentially. He can't mess up things. He can't change things. He can't save his mother, even though he wants to live in a universe called the Flashpoint Paradox with his mother who's still alive. But we all know he's going to put the can of tomato soup back, implying that he can't do what he wants to do and he can't mess around with time. Yes, sure. This should be obvious from anybody that has read any Flash comic or anybody that has watched TV show that you can't mess around with time and you can't do what you want to do. So yeah, it is a throwaway post credit scene. It really is a throwaway scene. But what were they going to do? Were they just going to end it with no post credit scene? No, it's nostalgia bait. They're trying to get the fandom hyped. And mostly I think this will work because... Guess what? People love Momoa being funny. Although I don't think he's that funny. People, I mean, this scene is pretty... In the context that it's not going anywhere, I get it. And some people are like, well, this scene is disrespecting the Snyderverse. It's got nothing to do with this. You need to just move on, you know? It's like... It's almost like the Snyderverse is like... The Snyderverse is your ex-girlfriend and she's not going to get back with you ever and it's not going to happen. And she can't go somewhere else to Netflix and then you can get back with her. Uh, it's just not going to happen. She's not going to get back with you. I'm talking about the Snyderverse like it's their ex-girlfriend. She's not going to get back with you. Move on. You need a new girlfriend, okay? The new universe, the new, as if I've just said that, the new universe is the new DCU. So don't be saying, yeah, fire James Gunn. It's got nothing to do with him. Sure, he is part of the studio. I get it. He's head of the studio, Pete Saffron. But did he write it? No. Did he write, direct it? No. He probably had a say in the post credit scene. Sure. But... Like I said, it's for the general population saying, James gone out, they're making a mockery of Aquaman. Aquaman's always been a bit of a, a funny joke, if you like. Not so much in Aquaman 1. I mean, Aquaman 2, careful spoilers, climate control and all that stuff. Kind of speak for itself and realistically, post credit scene tells you everything you need to know. It is throwaway. But it's there to tell you that essentially you can't mess around with time, Barry Allen. Although every Flash fan should already know that. And yeah, if you watch it without watching the movie, sure, it does come across like a bit nonsensical, if you like. And what I do find funny is a Twitter user called My Time to Shine tried to make out the exclusive information came from them. Uh, no. It came from, can we get some toast? So I noticed they put a post up going, oh yeah, I was right. No one believed me. People said I was because no one would have seen the final cut. And like we said, like I said about a week ago when we spoke about this, the scene's a tiny bit different, but it's the same premise that you have a drunk Aquaman with Barry Allen. But no, some of these scoopers try and take credit for other people's information. So can we get some toast? Like I said, I will be using that Twitter account's information in the future because they were right. They had the exclusive, not this My Time to Shine account that seems seems to jump on to other people's exclusives, other people's scoops. 
But yeah, trust can we get some toast because whoever's behind that account, they don't seem to miss. So also, there is a lot of negativity about the CGI and VFX of the movie. Yeah, I've, I've been like criticizing it. Cool. But when you understand you can criticize something and still enjoy something, Sure, I've not watched the movie yet, but I've read the whole plot. And as long as execution is very good, then I suppose this will be a pretty good movie. But to keep saying, oh, look, it's CW. The CW graphics com compared to the Snyder Cut, you are comparing a trailer to a movie that is out in 4K that came out in 2021. Just stop it. Just stop it. If you are a real DC fan, then you will support whatever James Gunn is doing. Guns of the Galaxy Volume 3 hit. Most people would agree that movie did hit. So do I have faith in James Gunn to cast a good Superman? Yes. Do I have faith that he is going to cast a good Batman? Yes. I, do. I think he will cast pretty decent. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but judge him on his own merit. The Flash movie, apart from the post credit scene and maybe the ending being changed a little bit, has absolutely nothing to do with him. I just feel like it is the Snyderverse people that are going, yeah, this movie's trash. The post credit scene's trash. No, narratively speaking, this movie actually will be pretty good. I'm not saying it's going to be the greatest comic book ever because I, I do think that's factually incorrect, but I think it's going to be pretty decent. And a lot of people are going, oh, the disrespect on Jason Momoa. It is unreal. I don't think it is unreal, really. Jason got paid to do that scene, I'm sure. I'm sure he was happy to do it. I'm sure he didn't kick up a fuss like, yo, no, I'm not doing that because that disrespects the Snyderverse. I'm pretty sure Jason doesn't care about the Snyderverse, to be honest. Most of these actors don't care about the Snyderverse. Sure, they'd love to do Justice League 2 and 3, but it's never going to happen. And sure, Henry Cavill's Superman scene should be put in. Sure, I get it. And sure, careful for spoilers, Grant should have been in this movie. And sure, they're Still could be a reverse flash scene, which I know there isn't, but sure, we can hope. They could have put a reverse flash scene there, but the fact they didn't tells us this Flash 2 script has been penned. I think that's a lie, because if they actually had a plan for the second movie, they would have teased up reverse flash in a post credit. And sure, yeah, they could add something different, because when you watch the movie on the 16th, there's going to be a lot of surprises. There's going to be no surprises to anybody like me who has covered leaks on this movie for literally a year and a half. There'd be no surprises for me. But there'll be surprises for normies, the general population. Wait until you see what the general population says. Getting a 70 plus in Rotten Tomato is very good, but I don't know. It's not my place to say, should you put whatever Ezra Miller's been doing in his personal life, literally causing havoc in Hawaii, robbing people, going to trial, not attending the premiere, only attending the premiere for pictures. Should that interpretate or should that mess up or should that even come into consideration? When you review a movie, well, that's completely up to you what you do. But a lot of people on Rotten Tomato can't get past what he's done in his real life. And that's fair enough. If that's the way they want to subjectively review a movie based on the actor's real life, I'm not here to say it's wrong, but it's heavily implied on some of the reviews that they just don't like Ezra Miller. And that's what a lot of people are going to say about me. But like I keep saying, come back when the movie's out and I would judge the movie on the actual movie on nothing else because as soon as I start watching the movie I forget everything I've spoke about on the channel so like always guys please stop this ridiculous restore the Snyder because it's not going to happen and if it is going to happen I would have told you that already and sadly it's not going to happen because a lot of things change from when I said yes the Snyderverse can and will be restored we have had Zack Snyder just seeking HBO Max which I told you before anyone else on the internet I don't care what you say I was the first YouTuber to say it and Eva even said it was going to be an HBO Max before anyone so yes sure I could not predict that Warner Bros Discovery was going to come in and I could not predict any other things there's always moving pieces especially in Hollywood so was I wrong no I wasn't wrong but I wasn't right the Snyderverse was going to be restored it's not going to be restored the ex-girlfriend's not going to come back to you she's moved on there's a new girlfriend that's if I'm using this right. there's a new girlfriend being the DC Universe if you're a true DC fan and movie fan or whatever you'll go watch it just wait and see what happens with this universe so like always guys be honest down below let me know everything ah, have you watched the Flash movie or are you one of these people that are, are gonna scream and cry that your favourite characters are getting they're not getting raised anyway the universe is still there if they want to pick up an Elseworlds storyline down five years down down the road they can but the only issue is that is the actors ain't going to be bothered in five years and they're probably going to be too old to restore that universe if they wanted to do that anyway it's so like always guys check us out on instagram at will you to see the beautiful handsome face behind that voice also check us out on twitter will you and i will catch you in another video very soon catch you later